universal basic income is having a bit of a renaissance. Ah, you see, UBI, or again, universal basic income, is a contested form of social security that is becoming much needed in our society today. UBI has been a long contested form of social security because it would render pretty much everybody to be a little bit more financially secure. But as AI becomes entrenched in almost every industry, every industry in sub-capacity, UBI has sparked the debate again. Can UBI yield the solution to mass loss? of jobs. We scratched the surface, as a society at least, on this conversation back when, you know, automation and assembly lines became a thing, correct? And now we're doing it again as AI quickly becomes a thing. UBI is a multifaceted and super complex issue as it will require a ton of political and social buy-in um, as well as funding, right? But in the context of AI-driven job loss, UBI could be thought of as a potential solution. But the only way that it can be successfully implemented is with meticulous planning. As AI has been evolving, so has these discussions and sort of the models and ideas that UBI might take in the future. The debate has only grown in urgency and complexity in itself, so I wanted to break it down. Proponents and those opposed to UBI and what they're saying. You might actually be shocked to learn that Mark Zuckerberg, Elon Musk, and Sam Altman, all high-profile tech leaders, are backing UBI. Musk and Altman in particular did say this. They believe that widespread AI adoption could render many jobs obsolete entirely. So we can see why maybe some sort of social security net might be required and just a good idea in general. So that's the first argument, plain and simple, right? AI automation might actually render many jobs obsolete. Therefore, UBI will be required to pick up the slack. Which brings us to the second part of the debate that proponents have for UBI. I'm talking about economic security. You see, individual economic security and financial stability is super important for many different reasons. Beyond that, economic security for society as a whole is awful important too. You see, as UBI is applied, right, and divvied out, if society removes this looming doom, right, of debt, uh, not being able to support yourself, to not be able to feed yourself, not be able to house yourself, if that looming threat of financial doom was removed, individuals could retrain for new jobs, pursue education, do things at a lower stakes, which does sound good. And I want to come back to because a lot of people think that's not exactly what would happen. But before we get there, you might be thinking, well, this is all predicated on the fact that AI has wiped out jobs. And you'd be correct. You see, even Elon Musk has suggested that in a, quote, benign scenario of AI development, everyone could be jobless, but with a, quote, universal basic high income. A universal high income. Sounds nice. In his world of UBI, this would imply that, you know, some sort of AI generated wealth could be redistributed throughout society, throughout individuals. I guess in some practice that is UBI, so long that it is universal and it is for everyone. Then, then there's Sam Altman. Sam Altman has proposed an innovative concept called a universal basic compute, where individuals would own units of a future large language model. I think he believes that an ownership of this potential AI uh, could be more valuable than money, but that does feel very stock market, right? It does feel very NFT coin vibey. Like, I think I'd rather just invest in stocks or like an index fund. But either way, this speculative asset, I guess, uh, could be good in the long term, but can I shop with Costco with it today? Can I use it today? How will it materially benefit me today? To be honest, I don't even know if I understand Sam Altman's explanation here. Um, he went on the All In podcast back in May and did try to explain basic compute. Um, and this is what he said, quote, Everybody gets like a slice of GPT-7's compute. They can use it, they can resell it, and they can donate it to somebody to use it for cancer research. What do you all think about this basic universal compute? I'm honestly a little bit confused. Perhaps there are simpler terms that you can explain it to me. Uh, do so in the comments. But again, we're not writing novels here, folks. No. Ultimately, UBI, I think, would uh, present a pretty unique opportunity that I wanted to revisit um, sort of the society impact, right? Where, where tech and, and culture will cross that. UBI could present that unique opportunity I mentioned earlier, right? Where people can find purpose. They have space to do that. I think individuals would take time being creative. They'd find meaning in, in like laborious tasks, right? That might normally be mundane. Innovation and choice, I think, are a winning combination 
that um, as Americans, right, in the States here, I think would, again, be that renaissance I started the video talking about. And for those of you who maybe think in different terms, think of this. With a guaranteed income, people might feel more secure to take that entrepreneurial leap, right? They might feel secure enough to launch that startup they've been thinking about, to pursue the business venture, right? The creative project they've wanted to do for so long that would benefit culture and maybe even mankind. But again, I know I'm getting ahead of myself. I do think though, before I move on, this sort of tech, this sort of moment, right, could be that driving innovation moment. The moment that sort of rapidly pushes societal progress. For the better, maybe, if we allow it to be for the better. In the most simple terms, though, I do think at the bare minimum, UBI could assist workers to be retrained, to be reskilled. Um, and that obviously can help as we rapidly change what labor looks like, what productivity looks like, and of course, all the while helping local labor local economy. That's still important. No matter how connected we are online and through tech, uh, we'll always be existing, at least for now, in local communities. And that's so important to remember. So in a nutshell, proponents believe this, the biggest tech leaders are saying we need UBI. They do sense a mass effect happening to the job markets because of adoption in every industry of AI. That's number one. Number two is that economic security, right? That individual financial stability, the productive labor that we can't just have poof, go away. UBI could ultimately give an entire cultural boost, okay, uh, to folks to get creating again, to get developing again. Are you with me? But there are opponents to UBI, and I think it's really important that we cover those two. Mostly, UBI opponents do say that it is financially irresponsible. It's ethically irresponsible. Critics do argue that if UBI was implemented, people would abuse it. They'd use it, they'd abuse it, and we couldn't sustain it as society. The New York Times covered critics and said this, quote, critics want if recipients would blow the funds on lottery tickets and booze. They raised concerns about the sources of funding. They suggested that heavy taxation on the wealthy or corporations might be necessary, which would face significant and political resistance. Well, that's interesting because as we mentioned at the top, tech leaders are in support of UBI in some capacity. Even moreover, I think the best thing that someone might be able to argue against UBI is all of the unknown factors, the enigma entirely surrounding it. Is it even a good thing that the tech industry is arguing for it? Is it pursuant upon these contingencies that AI wipes out every job in the first place. And, and if that's the case, how are these tech leaders making money and then funding the program? You see the enigma surrounding it. To me, it does feel a little off because corporations and the wealth, they like to keep their money. They don't like to share it, let alone redistribute it. I suspect that this is ultimately a way for the big corporations and obviously those that are building AI to deflect the responsibility, maybe the ethical uh, responsibility that they have uh, for the ultimate job losses that will be caused by their innovations. That feels a little pessimistic, I know. But padding the deck with assurances like UBI at least feels somewhat nice and and evil i don't know where i fall again i do think you are allowed to hold to these two contradicting ideas and feelings um i think that's okay i do think that tech companies maybe should focus on creating uh more jobs and opportunities in communities you know advocating for ubi is great and they should do that as well but i think those two things can also exist Perhaps we should lean on the companies to, you know, assume more responsibility for forging brand new jobs, right? What will new labor look like? Uh, what will new training look like? But if, if tech leaders actually see UBI as a way to mitigate the potential, you know, fallout, the material and economic damages that AI and the innovation of AI will cause, and it will cause some economic damage at least, they claim they want to redistribute the wealth. Is it too late? Is the bubble too bubbly? Is the hype at its peak? Ultimately, I do want to see UBI as sort of an alternative um, policy to AI, one that works complementary to it, right? I think any policies on the book that can help ensure that AI is benefiting the most amount of people um, is going to be for the better, period. But it's good that we're thinking about it now and again, unpacking these conversations now rather than later. We talk about tech, we talk about news, we talk about culture because it's all connected, baby. And if you did enjoy my commentary and the video, like the video, subscribe to the channel because here there's more content like this. So until next time, I'm V. Stay curious. I'm out of here.